Hello and welcome to today's video, Monday, March 26, 2012. This video will be on the NASDAQ 100, looking at this on a two month and then later on on the four month time frame. Right now, each one of these candles represents two months worth of data. So let's get started. And I want to go over this to just go over the Fibonacci analysis as this is a very good teaching tool. So let's get started. So from this point here to this point in here, there was a total of uh, about 10 candles or roughly almost two years seeing the price go up from about uh, 1300 and change up to 5,133, which is a pretty significantly sized gain for the average of 100 technology stocks. And then the move lower, well, it was pretty harsh to go from 5,000 down to pretty much a thousand or the loss of close to 80 percent in just a couple years plus of time. That's pretty massive but that's what happened and now for this move to be that of a success what needs to happen it needs to stay and hold below this level and uh, well it's staying below we don't know if it's going to hold below it for it to fail, it needs to break and hold above this level. Well, it's broken above it and it hasn't yet held above it. So let's now go through the movements from this point. It took a few periods for this thing to really consolidate and get ready to move, but one, two, three, four, really five periods of going straight up, really even close to a, ha a full year. And it uh, immediately consolidated within this uh, significant Fibonacci level, or the first one, which is pretty much by the book. You have one, two, three, four, five, uh, really six candles where it was used as resistance. But on this green candle here, it broke above it, and we had one, two, three, four, five, six candles where it f was found a support. Given two month charts, that means a year finding to, uh, the 2000 level as resistance, then another year finding 2000 as support, breaking free. You expect it to go to this level. That's exactly what happened. So, therefore, if you were playing the Fibonacci game to sell here, it worked. It worked extremely well because that's where the top comes into play. If you play the Fibonacci game to buy here, that was a loss. Not every single time that it goes to a certain area, you're going to always win playing this type of analysis. But for the times you lose compared to the times you win, well, then you can make your decisions how well it's doing. But it's good to note that when you're looking at Fibonacci levels where you're supposed to see a change in direction or at least go sideways, that if it doesn't do it, then you can expect more or even more aggressive of the action you were seeing coming in, which in this case is going down. Didn't stop at 2,000. Instead, it goes down another 40% or so. And that would have said a lot of people or made a lot of people who bought here to get stopped wherever it is that they got stopped. But that's for people who actually use this Fibonacci. Not many people even use it. Most people who are trying to calculate the difference from this high to this low are noticing that it's breaking above the 38.2 or the first Fibonacci level. But they're using linear Fibonacci on a movement of charts that work in a logarithmic way. So kind of counterproductive in a way. But when you have this resistance point in here and now you manage to come back up showing that this is a failed move, oftentimes from failed moves can create fast moves in the opposite direction. And you have a situation where you come back to the previous resistance after having a long time in testing this area and a situation where it corrected pretty harshly, you again would expect it to have a level of resistance. And if you're bullish, you're hoping that it's not that major of a pullback. And going from 2000 or 3000 down to 2400, that's not that large of a pullback. And then, boom, you're back again after already establishing this breakdown or this correction. So now the odds of breaking this level are increased. The chances weren't good of going above it here, and it didn't. The chances, again, were not that great of breaking above it here, and it didn't. The chances were good of breaking above it, and it did. 
So now that it's broken above it, we're going to zoom in a little bit on uh, what's happened now, even though you can see it without the zoom. And we'll go to what's going on now. And we can see that on the break above this level that we have came back already, at least in the last uh, this month, of, of finding support where we once found resistance just by looking at this uh, black line. Okay, let's see what else is there to uh, figure out. This mainly, if uh, it's going to break through, it will we find support in here. Whenever you can confirm that you're going to hold and stay above a significant area like this, well, then what that tells us is that we're going to be making a test of this previous high. Let's move this on to the four-month chart now. And on the four-month chart, we're going back uh, quite a ways. I know it's hard to read some of these dates on here, but uh, this does go back to about the end of the 1970s. And we have a high of 51.33, the same high as before, the all-time high in the NASDAQ. And we have a low of 54.87, basically 55, even though the lowest on this chart is 100. If you're looking at a chart, you've never seen this chart before, one well, of the questions you'd want to ask yourself is, well, where did we come from as a significant bottom? And by looking back in the 70s where the bottom was, the answer to that is 5487. So it basically went up 10, excuse me, 100 times its value from the 70s to the end of the 1990s, whether a lot of this has to do with inflation and if I'm saying this by looking at all of the long-term charts of everything out there from all the stocks, all the commodities, gold, silver, oil, you name it, you wonder why they're going up in the long-term time frame. Hmm. Anyway, bottom line is within that 55 low, it did not find support at the 38.2% level. So either one of two things is going to happen. A, it's not going to find support there for it's a large pierce above this level. Or B, it's going to take its sweet little time to find support and actually when it does go to uh, 907 ish or so then that's where we'll have that support but it's been what 25 35 periods or so which is quite a ways no it's probably not going to find support at that level rather we're finding support in around here which is the 23.6 percent retracement from the big low of of 5047 in the big high of 5133. This is also very comparable to how the gold price has been looking recently as you're mainly seeing how a market cor can correct sideways through time and uh, if you're looking at a long-term chart which this is then maybe some people looking at an inflationary environment might decide to call this a silent crash. Because even though the market's not completely crashing down, but it's going sideways, the average person in the NASDAQ from this point here is pretty much break even. You're losing within inflation. And the big reason why the NASDAQ has been doing so well has been because of the price of Apple. Apple, which is now about $600 a share. And at one point, Apple was cheaper than the price of silver. Right, roughly around the end of the 1990s when there was a time frame where Apple was $3 and change an ounce, or $3 and change a share. Silver was $4 and change an ounce. And as we can see now that uh, with silver at about 30 something and Apple at about 600, that it's about 20 times larger. Apple also has a market cap of about a half of a trillion dollars. So that's one stock with a large cap that's able to just excessively go towards the upside. But quite frankly, when I look at all of the different indexes, all of the different stocks, all commodities over a long period of time, the major reason why they go up, in my humble opinion, is because of the pure, true definition of inflation. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great week. Bye-bye.